Hey everyone, this is Derek, and in this video we're going to look at evaluating a derivative at a given value for x. So we're still finding derivatives, and then now we're just going to find the derivative at a given point, um, which would be, which would represent either the slope of the tangent line at that point, or the instantaneous rate of change. Again, remember those are the same thing, but that's, that's kind of what we're finding in this section. Um, so we have this, we're given this, so first thing I have to do is find the derivative of it so I can evaluate. So dy dx is going to equal 3 halves times 5x to the 3 halves minus 1. And so remember it just goes here times uh, the exponent times the thing in front and then minus 1 off the exponent. So cleaning that up a little bit, we're going to get 15 halves. Because uh, I'm going 3 times 5 for 15, that's like a 1. And then 3 halves minus 1 would leave me 1 half, right? Because that would be like 2 halves. So 15 halves to the 1 half. And that would be my derivative. Um, but now I'm going to evaluate that derivative at x equals 4. So then the derivative evaluated at x equals 4, um, that would equal... 15 halves, and then this one uh, to the one half, I'm going to write that as a root, uh, same thing, and then I'll just equals, so that's 15 over 2 times 2, those re reduce, and so the derivative evaluated at 4 is uh, 15. So the instant instantaneous rate of change at that point would be 15, or the slope of the tangent line at that point would be 15. Um, same idea over here. So first thing I gotta do is find f prime of x. Um, and actually, no, first thing I'm gonna do is rewrite this. So it's still f of x. Uh, x to the negative three minus two x to the negative one. Okay, so now that I have that rewritten, um, I will find my derivative, f prime of x. So this is gonna be negative three x and then negative three minus one. And then this is negative times negative, so that's now positive two x minus 1 minus 1. So f prime of x is going to equal negative 3x to the negative 4, and then plus 2x to the negative 2. And then I'm supposed to evaluate that um, at 3. And so since I'm going to actually try to do math with this, I think I will rewrite those this way. So I'm going to rewrite those with positive exponents since I'm about to plug in the 3, and that'll make it a little bit easier. So now I'm just finding, so instead of writing the function evaluated at, I get to write f prime of 3, which is makes you appreciate function notation now. Um, so we're just going to go 3 over 3 to the 4th plus 2 over 3 squared. So there, one of those 3s would cancel, and that would leave me negative 1 over 3 cubed, which would be 27 plus 2 over 9. And then if I get a common denominator, 3 over 3, that would be negative 1 plus, it looks like 6, so that will be 5 27 Okay, so this question is asking me to find all values of x where the slope of the tangent line to this function is 0. So if the slope is 0, that means the derivative would be equal to 0, which means I need to find the derivative. So we will find f prime of x. So right here, I'm just going to go 2 times 4 is 8x. And then that's a little invisible. 1 times 3 makes plus 3. And then take off 1, and then the x drops out because it's x to the 0. So there's my derivative. And if I want to find uh, where the slope is 0, that means that the derivative equals 0. And I just solve for my x. Super easy. So I bring my 3 over. 8 equals negative 3. And it looks like at 8 equals negative, uh, I'm sorry, x equals negative 3 eighths is where the tangent line would be 0. And this one is, if g of x equals this function, find all values x for which g prime of x equals 0. So again, we're just going to take, so notice this isn't g of g prime of 0. This is saying set the function to 0, solve for the x's. So if it was g of 0, we're plugging in 0. But this is saying find where it is 0. So first thing we're going to do is find g prime. So we'll go 3 times 4 makes 12x, take 1 off, squared. And then 2 times 3 makes 6x, take 1 off to the first. 
and now I'm trying to figure out where this equals zero. So I can set that to zero. And uh, best way to do that's gonna be factoring. So we're gonna take out a six X, that's our common factor. It'll leave us a two X, six times two is 12 X, X, X squared. And then plus that one placeholder. And here we have six X equals zero. So at X equals zero. And for this branch, we got two X plus one makes zero. Bring my one over. 2x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 1 half.